Good evening, everyone. Welcome in to The Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, joined by our head coach of the then number 17-ranked University of Pikeville Bears. Good week for the Bears. Two games in the Mid-South Conference. Two wins, including a win over the number three-ranked team in the country, Lindsey Wilson. And that certainly makes the mood of this show a little better. Coach, uh, uh, you look a little better than you did last week. Uh, Bears had stumbled a, a little bit, but this week coming off big wins, wins that were needed, and uh, team taking care of business. They, they really did. It was an exceptional week overall. Uh, guys played up to our level of play. Uh, we got two great wins against the number three team in the country, and then Campbellsville, who was surging, play, won six out of their last seven games. So sure. it was a, a very good week of play for us. And, um, you know, we talk about how important each week is, and last week was very important, but this coming week is very important too. So it, uh, there's always pressure in our league to, to perform and do well, but I was thrilled for a bounce back from the week before. That was, that was better. Lindsey Wilson, of course, uh, I think uh, a team that has only three losses on the year. You own two of those, and this week uh, we'll take a look at where they're rated. Last week they were number three. You had to be pleased with that game. Well, it is. It's, it's good for us in a lot of ways. One, it gives us credibility. Uh, we beat the number three team, actually swept the number three team in the country. Uh, we're the only team to do that. So, sure. I mean, we've, if by any chance that we get met at the very end tied up, we win the tiebreaker because we've, we've swept them. So that's good. And any other scenario where we tie with someone else, it goes to the first team in the league, which we have swept, and we're the only right. team to do that. So it gives us some good positioning. It gives us some good credibility nationwide. Uh, but as we talk about the polls a little bit later, it looks like we got a little bit of uh, credit for our body of work already. Absolutely. Of course, Campbellsville, a team that's been receiving votes, they've been playing very well. You take care of business there. But again, a game that uh, the Bears struggled a little bit to put away down the stretch. Campbellsville, a, a determined, hungry team we saw Saturday. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Our team is kind of adapted or adopted this philosophy when we get a good lead we're going to relax and quit playing a little bit and that's just not a recipe for success we've got to con continue to play hard and uh, be hungry in, in those situations we'll get a 8 to 12 point lead and it looks like we'll stop playing defense for three possessions take a couple bad shots and next thing you know blink of an eye it's a four point game and uh, we certainly did that against Camels we had a great run second half we were we were going away with the game just like it planned and um, then it was a two-point game, and we're fighting, scratching for a win at the end, which we accomplished the goal, and that's to get a win. But, boy, it could have been a lot easier. Absolutely. Of course, Senior Day, we'll talk about that, saying so long to some Bears seniors who were playing in their final home game against Campbellsville. Took care of business, and uh, you mentioned no rest for the weary. Uh, two good wins last week, back on the road this week, and then finish up the regular season next Monday. Uh, Three-game stretch for this team before you head to tournament time. And do you like where your team's playing? I really do. I thought last week uh, really got us going back. I think, you know, as you look at our team versus some of the other teams, I think we're really surging into play. And it's it's funny how in, in a week's time you, you can flip that to that scenario. I didn't think we played poorly, um, you know, at St. Catharines or Georgetown. Played right. well enough to win but didn't win. So you don't feel really good about it. But sure. this week we, we played well enough. I thought against Lindsay we played as well as we've played all year. I think Lindsay is uh, arguably one of the top teams in the country. And uh, we, we had our way with them at home. Uh, it was a very close game down there. And uh, just pleased with the way our team's playing and we're progressing. And uh, hopefully that will carry over to the next three games. So, you know, Thursday, Saturday, Monday are, are huge for us. It's not something that this team's been accustomed to. Thursday, Saturday, typically the conference schedule. You've got a Thursday matchup on the road, Saturday on the road, and then Monday you come back a little sooner than you've had to over the last couple of months. Uh, any concerns your team may be leg weary heading into Monday? Yeah, because we're, you know, we're probably going to catch every one of them on senior night too. Sure. So they're going to be emotional and they're going to be an all-time high in those regards. But uh, it boils down to it. we've got an opportunity to, to win ourselves to where we want to be. Right. And that's all you can ask for. And if we blow it, then we've blown it. But if we take care of business like we think we will, uh, then it's a great reward at the end. And, you know, it is unique playing Thursday, Saturday, Monday. But, um, you know, if we get the opportunity to play the national tournament, we're going to have to play back-to-back -back games just like that. And uh, our team's built to do that. Yeah. Not concerned about most of the players, but I think of players like Terrence Santo, who who's bothered by the knee. And, uh, 
playing extremely well when you consider the fact that uh, he has such damage in that leg and just gutsy performances every time. But you can, you think about guys like that, guys like a, Elisha Justice, who looks like he's 100% right now, but coming off that, you weren't worry about uh, maybe the legs uh, leaving them in a three-game stretch like that. But We, we, we do, but we, we try to, to manipulate that with practice time and try to take them off of it some. And days between games, we do more mental work than physical work. And... Um, we're trying to be smarter than, than 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 harder in a lot of ways, and maybe ten years ago I would not have been sure. open to any of that. But uh, the guys have been very mature; they haven't taken advantage of those those times when they're sitting out, and uh, it's worked out well for us. But you know, we're going we're deeper now. We've got good roster, so I mean, the the three games in in five days or something that you're concerned about, but, you know, heck, if it's me and you playing, I'd really be worried, but these 18 to 21-year-olds can probably take it a little better than you and I can. I'm worried about getting them through one half. <laughs> one half, Coach, that's the best I can do. We've got highlights coming up tonight. We'll take a look back at the win over number three, Lindsey Wilson and Campbellsville, and we'll preview this week's action and one of the Bears receiving national acclaim. We'll let you know all about that. We're talking U Pike basketball. The Bears last week, 17th in the country. We've got this week's ratings coming up on this edition of the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back in to the Kelly Wells Show. We talk University of Pikeville Bears basketball. The Bears last week ranked 17th in the country and wrapping up the home portion of the 2013 season. Time to take a look at some highlights from last week and there were plenty. Of course, Thursday night, the number three ranked team in the country, Lindsey Wilson at the Expo Center and the Bears looking to take care of business and complete the season sweep. They got it done. Let's take a look at those highlights now. His first play is one we've been trying to get to a lot more. We got four out of our five guys touch the basketball here. Um, and Josh Whitaker gets a nice little rub off screen here. And we're trying to get more movement in our offense. We've had a hard time lately, but here's some transition stuff. And uh, Deuce gets a great three off a good screen by Trevor. Um, and here's sharing the wealth a little bit more right here. Here's Trevor getting a great outlet pass. And as you can tell, our transition game is very good when we're doing these kind of things. And CJ gets a nice and one down on the other end of the floor because he's very, very athletic, very, very fast. Here's another one of our elbow plays, and Deuce just makes a strong move to the basket on three people. Uh, probably should have been a foul call there, but he finished around the rim, and he's been doing a lot better job of that. That's, that's been beneficial to us. Again, another half-court set for us. He's had a great screen. This is Colt Chapman coming right off the bench, banging a three home, and uh, just got everybody hyped up. He really did a great job for us. He's a, he's a big-time energy guy for us. Freshman that's grown up a lot. Yeah, he has. And the whole place erupted when Elijah hit this three from the wing. I, I think he kind of feeds our, our crowd and our fans. And when he gets it going, everybody gets it going. More confidence being shown every time out for Elijah. I think so, too. Here's another great finish at the rim for Chris Johnson. You don't realize how athletic he is at 5'9", but uh, at the end of the game, when he gets the rebound against uh, uh, Campbellsville, he showed how big and how athletic he was. And here's Trevor doing his thing with a great pass from CJ. Got a nice three. Had to straighten his hair out on the back on the way back. <laughs> Take it behind his ears. Yeah. Here he is in transition again. And again, if you leave him open, he's he's gonna make it at a high percentage rate. And that's why he gets the hair straightened for the next trip. Down you got, you gotta make sure he's ready for the camera. Yeah. Here's another great out of bounds play for us. Deuce sneaks in against the Giants and finds a great Colt Chapman here cutting to the basket. Official gets it right, calls a block, and Colt goes up to the free throw line for an and one. Here we are again, more transition basketball. And uh, Josh just really, when he's aggressive, man, he is so good. And, uh, he certainly was hunting that shot from tra from transition. Trevor with a great rebound. He's he's third in the conference rebound in eight per game with a great out pass to Josh, trying to get back in our pressure, which was the ultimate difference in his game for us. Trevor said he's become a quick, complete player. He has. I, I'm not ready to give him complete yet. He's still got to learn guard a little bit better, but he has certainly picked up a lot of different avenues, and he's a he's a great, great player for us. Here we are back in our press and. 
really caused them a lot of problems. Here's CJ getting a great deflection and Josh getting to the basket, made a nice surge here and kind of pushed the game out of out of reach for, for the Blue Raiders here. Looked really deflated at that time, did Lindsey Wilson. We did, and we kept trying to come back and, and really go at them inside to try to get some easy baskets. And the mismatch was with Josh Whitaker. They, when we play our three guards, they've got to bring one of their bigger players out. Yeah. And just so happened to be was on Josh, you see what he does to a bigger player. Here's Deuce heating the ball up, uh, making them make decisions they don't want to. And Josh Whitaker to Elijah Justice, created by Deuce Briscoe's defense. Another set for some of the ball screen offense. Elijah rubbing off these top ball screens. They get lost for just a second. Trevor sneaks out, gets a three, and should have got a foul call as well. Trevor's going to let the official know as he's, he's going down the floor as well. Here we are defensively in transition, do a great job of taking the post away. And Chris passed nine guys going down for a layup. He was on the block, so it shows you what kind of athlete he is. I think it's something we take for granted is the quickness he has. We really do. I think we take for granted a lot of our guys. There's Elijah again as, as fast. And when you talk to other people that haven't seen our team play a lot, the first thing they say is, man, I cannot believe how fast your guards are. Here's Greg McGee with a great up and under with a little floater. Playing very confident for us right now. Lindsey Wilson, the number three ranked team in the country. They fall to our Bears, 95-87, the final. Then on Saturday, uh, senior day, Campbellsville receiving votes in last week's national ratings. They come to town, a very hungry team, looking to climb their way into the top 25. No better way to do that than knock off the Bears. I thought they were hungry. I thought our team uh, showed up and, and took care of business. Uh, team that's averaging in the 90s held to under 80, and a lot of times that's a concern, but this Bears team showed a lot of mental toughness. Well, we really couldn't get the game exactly in the tempo that we wanted to get it into. We, we, we forced it several times to get it to the tempo we wanted to, but they didn't want any part of playing fast. But right. they did a great job of doing nothing but having ball handlers in full court. So when we'd run and jump and pressure them, it's usually a ball handler to another ball handler. With a lot of times, it's a post player to a ball handler, and we, we expose them in that. But give Keith a lot of credit. He really took some of that away from us. Really had to force that tempo and that pressure, which later in the game did us some good things. And then late stretch, we didn't handle business the way we should have with free throws and execution. But uh, nonetheless, found a way to win. Found a way to win. That's what it's all about. We take a look at the highlights now from Campbellsville, and I think we'll get started with second half action. Yeah, here's uh, here's one of our sets here, and Deuce Briscoe catching on the wing does a great job of attacking a double team, uh, kisses off the square and makes a great finish. He's done so much better finishing around the rim the last probably month of the season. Here's another good drive by Trevor Strong with it, gets fouled, puts it in, could have called on anybody down there. He's he's really gotten better at finishing around the rim and around the basket. Here's a great play, back tip by Josh Whitaker, CJ hits. Uh, Greg McGee who gets a nice flush that kind of gets he blows a kiss to somebody in the crowd we just got to get him mature a little bit those, those kind of things gotta gotta stop there's a great pass by Colt Chapman off the drive great finish by Big T a little scoop shot underneath the basket he did a lot better finishing around the rim he had 16 he points and uh, gave us a big lift here we are trying to force our our pressure on him uh, CJ gets a great deflection Elijah leads the break and return to center and then uh, CJ gets him a nice bucket and that kind of gets our, our energy going a little bit. Here's some of our ball screen offense again. Shows how good an athlete Chris Johnson is turning the corner, finishing off the square. It's good to see him on senior night play so well. Here's EJ with a great deflection, leads the break. Back to Chris Johnson on senior night. Uh, very, very good finish for us. And I uh, didn't show the last little part of the game, but we didn't execute great, but uh, found a way to step up and uh, make some free throws and, and get a stop at the end to win the game. Bears hang on, get a 77-75 win over Campbellsville. Now stand at 21-5, and 12-5 and 5 in the conference, and new ratings coming out. Let's talk about Saturday, senior day. You say so long to some guys, and let's talk about what those young men have meant to the Bears program. Well, it's, it's kind of a blink of an eye for, for several of them. Each of them are different in their circumstance. You know, Trevor's been with me since he was an eighth grader in, in high school, so obviously, you know, I, I, we've got a long history, and sure. it's it's harder in different ways to, to say goodbye to him. And, of course, with, with plenty more games to go, it takes a little bit of the blow away. Right. But you got guys like, you know, Deuce Briscoe and Chris Johnson and Terrence Santilla that have been with us a year, year and a half, uh, but they still become part of who you are and part right. of your family. And, uh, man, I tell you, it's hard to hard to look at that class when he took a picture of them. Add Chris Barlow in there as well. You just take a picture and look at what you're losing. I mean, it's significant, and it's uh, not just playing wise, but 
people-wise. I sure. mean, if my son grows up to be a student athlete like Chris Johnson, man, I'll be one happy camper. Absolutely. And, uh, and, you know, those are the kind of things that you'll remember forever. And uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of more time with them and get to enjoy them more. But it, it is, it's a sad day to see those guys kind of kind of head their career down. Absolutely. And uh, senior day, historically, all the seniors get a start. Chris Barlow, what a great story he is. Coming from the JV, JV program, earning his way to the varsity program, he gets a start, first shot. He drills a three-pointer. I thought it was a special moment. I wished it was in the highlights. Yeah, we, we missed that one. Uh, we had a hard time getting that film to download all the way. But, you, you know, we talked before the game, and what if Chris could shoot, hit a three to, to start things off and we can kind of build momentum and sure. just really have a great senior night. And he held his part up. Uh, he got out there and he knocked the bottom, didn't hesitate, very aggressive. And, uh, you know, as you look at the final score, 77 to 75, that three-point shot looks pretty big. That it does. Uh, and we, we gave him the credit for that, and he uh, – he was thankful for the opportunity, and that's that's when you know you've got something special going. Very thankful young man, and wants to get into coaching. That's a memory he'll have forever. Absolutely. That's a look at highlights from last week's action. Wins over number three, Lindsey Wilson and Campbellsville in conference play, wrapping up the home portion of the season. This week, the Bears go on the road to the University of Rio Grande on Thursday, Shawnee State University Saturday. Of course, we'll have coverage for you on Xerox 107.5 and PikeTV.com. And then Monday, the Bears wrap up the regular season on the road at Wise next Monday. Thursday, Saturday, Monday, we'll be right there to bring it to you. Uh, we talk about Senior Day, some guys leaving. We want to talk more about recruiting uh, when we come back, but also talk about one of the Bears players receiving national acclaim this week. We'll talk about a Player of the Week honor, also this week's ratings, and a look at the week ahead. It's all coming up on the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless on EKB Sports and Pike TV. Welcome back in. The Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless on Z-Rock 107.5 and EKB Sports along with Pike TV. And, of course, you can catch Bears action on PikeTV.com. Andrew Joyce rejoined by head coach of the University of Pikeville Bears and uh, coach first national ratings last week. Number three, Lindsey Wilson, comes to Pikeville. The number 17 ranked Bears knock off the number three ranked team in the country and rewarded for that just a little bit. The latest ratings are out. Columbia, Missouri still at number one, still undefeated. Lindsey falls to number four in the nation. The Bears jump to number 12 and leap ahead of Georgetown, who comes this week tied at number 13. Your thoughts on this week's ratings? Uh, about what I expected. I didn't, I didn't expect us to jump Georgetown because I didn't even vote us ahead of Georgetown. But it, I guess it shows the credibility from the beginning of the season to now and, and our body of work. Um, I, I was pleasantly surprised that Lindsay only dropped one spot, so it gave a little bit of a power ranking to the loss to us. Uh, but, you know, I'm thankful that the uh, voters, you know, and the, and the coaches put us in a position to be in that top ten if we'll take care of business down the stretch here. And, you know, three games left, three to remain. If we win ourselves up, then we'll have an opportunity to get in that top ten. Those are national ratings, and uh, also we mentioned uh, one of the Bears players receiving national acclaim. Yesterday, Trevor said he named Mid-South Conference Player of the Week. He averaged 23.5 points and had 8.5 rebounds last week in the wins over Lindsay and Campbellsville. Today, the NAI released its Player of the Week, and Trevor said he gets that award also. Yeah, he's had probably three weeks that I can remember that he's had good enough weeks to be player of the week in the yeah. conference, and somebody's just had an, an exceptional week, either a 26-rebound game or a 42-point explosion, and he just hasn't got on the top side of that, but he, he got them all this week. He got the Mid-South Conference as well as the National Player of the Week, and it's good for him because he's a confident-type player, so sure. this will build more momentum for him. If I can keep him under wraps at all in any shape, form, or fashion. This will help him as we get into tournament time. A confident type player? Well, he, that's an understatement of the week, I'm sure. One of the most confident players that we've seen, and that that's Trevor. We've grown to know and love. Uh, Trevor said he this week's NAI National Player of the Week. He's ranked in the top 10 in 10 categories. 
and in the top 50 in the country in, in several categories. Uh, Trevor said he, he's certainly a guy that's going to be missed, part of that senior class. They'll all be missed, but good to see one of ours getting national uh, recognition. And Trevor gaining some confidence, kind of a little bit of a reminder of the national tournament run a couple of years ago when he found that confidence, and we all know that he ended up as tournament MVP. Coach, heading on the road this week, and you've got games in Ohio, Rio Grande, that's coming up Thursday night. A little scouting report on Ryle. Much improved team since we saw them the first time. I think we beat it by 19 at our place. Um, but they're playing much, much better. They beat Cumberland's Kentucky uh, on the road, which is hard to do. There's only been two games that Cumberland's lost at home all season long. Sure. So uh, the D.D. Joyner kid that that's, was a freshman for him is starting to come into his own. He had 41 against Cumberland's at Cumberland. So it shows how good of a player he is. Uh, but Ken French does a tremendous job. We, we'll have to be ready to play. and. You know, it's going to be faculty appreciation night. I think their seniors are getting honored that night. They're probably honoring Bob Evans that night. Who knows? You know, we've we've got to be prepared, and that's that's no different when we play Ryle Grand, when we play Shawnee State, when we play Lindsey Wilson, or play the University of Louisville. Uh, we prepare the same. So uh, I think our guys are excited. They understand what's what's at stake. We've seen both sides of it. Uh, if we have another good week like we did last week, we see the reward in the rankings. Uh, two weeks ago, we saw when we dropped two in a row what happened to our rankings as well. So. You know, as a teacher, they've got perfect example of, of what they have to do sure. and what their expectations are. On the road then to Shawnee State and Shawnee uh, Saturday, that game 4 o'clock tip-off. Again, one of the final games of the regular season for many teams. You may see Senior Day again, but Shawnee, a team that's been receiving votes, they've been playing well down the stretch. They really have. A very veteran team. It's, Jeff's had this team now for four years, basically identical. Uh, no changes really whatsoever. One of their uh, starters is out with a torn uh, rotator cuff, so he's not going to be playing for him. So it's the next man up for him. So they have to bring a new guy in their starting lineup. But, you know, they're fourth in the league right now, probably the biggest comeback of anybody in our league for sure. sure. And uh, they've beaten some good teams. They've lost a couple games they probably would like to have back. But at their place, they're going to be tough. We had a, a good win against them here, about 20 points. But uh, totally different when you go on the road. It's a totally different animal, right. so our guys have to be ready. Shawnee State uh, reminds me a little of Campbellsville as well. Uh, they've been flirting with the top 25. Mm -hmm. It's a team that will be very hungry, and if you catch them on senior day, you have that added incentive, and uh, the Bears need to be focused. I know you'll take care of that. Well, we, you know, I, we were listening to Bill Self the other day when they lost three games in a row, and, and one of the things he said is they're, they're not getting everybody's good effort. They're getting everybody's starving effort. Sure. I mean, people are starving to beat them, and right. uh, we get some of that as well. I mean, teams don't just want to beat us to say they beat us. They're starving to move up in the polls. Right. And, uh, they see an opportunity, so we... You know, we got to guard our house. We've got to be ready to play. Coach Kelly Wells, we talked to Pike basketball senior day last week and said so long. Trevor Setti, Chris Barlow, Terrence Santel, Chris Johnson, and Jamar Briscoe, and talked about the talent that won't be there next year. We still have several games left this year, but final home game. As you take a look at those guys who won't be part of the program, I know recruiting is a 365-day-a-year process. Uh, what's the recruiting like for this team? at this stage in the season because you're still wrapped up in the regular season getting ready for tournament time what's the recruiting process like around the coaches offices well it's it's like brushing your teeth you do it every single day and a lot of days two or three times uh, we we really do a good job of getting ourselves out shaking trees and bushes because there's just we, we don't go get the top player in the country we have to go out and find the right fit for us and, sure. and the right kid that's willing to do the things we ask him to do we've been blessed that we have three kids on campus that are sitting out this year uh, get familiar with the program, uh, uh, we'll know exactly what we're doing and won't really be a newcomer, so to speak, when we come back. Darnell Tubbs being one that played first semester, and right. we're sitting him second semester, so he'll be able to play his senior year. Uh, Kenny Manigold, who's a, a young man who started at Wichita State, can play the one through the four. He's a tremendous player, and he's getting academically well right now. And the other is Ashawn White, who's a transfer from Chipola Junior College, one of the best junior colleges in the country. So we've got three pieces that will replace some of what we're graduating. Sure. Uh, the hardest part for us is recruiting post players that are good enough. Um, they don't grow on trees, and anybody that's a good post player is going to get swept up by Division One, even if they can walk to bubblegum at the same time. Right. So we have a hard time there, and we're going to have to sign three posts. That's going to be our challenge over the summer. And uh, We're knocking on every door, calling every junior college that, that we can find and prep school to find the right fit. Uh, but we've had success playing fast, so if we don't find exactly what we want post-wise, we'll, we'll go a little smaller and keep playing fast. Sure. 
High school recruiting, of course, the high schools in the postseason. I know it's something that you always keep your eye on, uh, recruiting the best of the best from the region and across uh, several states around the area. Uh, the University of Pikeville coaching staff, as you work around the schedule, and how much tournament time will you get to see? We, we do our best, and I, I've kind of a, adapted a little bit uh, of what Coach Cal talks about in his team. He says, you know, all I can worry about is my team, coaching my team. And I've, I've adapted some of that as I've gotten uh, more seasoned in my career. And I let my assistants travel the globe. Wherever they want to go, let them, let them roll. Sure. Uh, I try to spend a little more time with my kids and my wife and uh, really concentrate on our guys and let them do the chasing around. And they now direct my sales of where I need to go to, to see kids play. And, sure. uh, that's worked out well. I've, I've got the best staff that a person could ever imagine. It's not a magic wand that I waved over this program, but they've been great, and that's why that's why recruiting has done so well here. Recruiting goes well when you've got a national coach of the year, Kentucky state champion, national champion. Uh, that helps out a little bit, and then the fact that we've got one of those coaches that uh, we're proud to have leading our program. Quality individual, quality coach, and hey, it's a quality program. Coach Kelly Wells, uh, we've enjoyed the season. We're not ready to wrap it up just yet. No, Three sir. on the road, Bears need to take care of business, then we'll head to tournament time. Good luck this weekend. Let's get three. We're excited about it, and, you know, the opportunities in front of us and knocking at our door, we've got to answer and take care of business. But we're looking forward to it. And, and they're pretty close games. I know we don't have any home games, but as far as if you wanted to pinpoint three of the closest conference games, you've got them here, Shawnee State and Portsmouth, Ohio, Rio Grande and Rio Grande, Ohio, and Wise, Virginia. This is as close as we can get you. So uh, come on out and, and support us. We'd love to see you. There you go. I'll have room for a couple if anybody needs a ride. Come on along. We'll travel and check out the Bears wrapping up the regular season. Stay tuned to Z-Rock 107.5 and PikeTV.com as you follow the now number 12 ranked team in the country, our University of Pikeville Bears. Next up Thursday at the University of Rio Grande, Saturday at Shawnee State University, and next Monday on the road at UVA Wise to wrap up the regular season. On behalf of Coach Kelly Wells and the University of Pikeville Bears basketball program, you've been tuned to the Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless on EKB Sports and Pike TV.